Tech. Um, Tan is the host, and he's not here this evening. I think he's on vacation, but he's watching us. He promised he would watch his live stream. So, hi, <laughs> Tan. Um, D Name Tech got started about four years ago now, and it actually is an offshoot of A2 New Tech, which many of you are familiar with. And so we're really excited to be here tonight, and we appreciate the invitation from Rich, who is the CEO of the Foundry. He's there and back. Before um, I pass the floor over to him, I just need to say a few thanks to our sponsors. So Start Garden has made this possible tonight. Kidpreneur, Wisdom, Quicken Loans, and the Mid Michigan Innovation Center. So with that, I will hand the floor over to Rich, and he can tell you a little bit about the country. Thanks, Anne Marie. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Rich. I'm one of the partners here at New Foundry. Uh, first off, uh, I wanted to thank a few folks. I uh, wanted to thank Peter and Doug Allen. Uh, they provided us with parking availability at the Riverfront building up here. They actually own quite a few of the properties here, so with their office space, they're really great to talk to for that. Um, not just on here, but in other areas of Ann Arbor. Uh, we'd also like to thank Bob John, who's here. He's going to present actually one of his products that he has at the end of this uh, presentation uh, that he's, he's in the process of getting funded and out to market. Um, he provides this beautiful facility that we get to uh, spend our days gazing out the windows at the ocean, or the ocean, <laughs> the river over here that we, uh, that we really like to view of. Um, and also the new center uh, folks over here, because they also provide additional parking for us too, because uh, it's, it's a North Main Street is an awesome area. We don't get a lot of attention right now, but hopefully things will be improving. I know Ann Arbor's focus on traffic is better, but you know it's pretty close to the community, and I was just interested in cool things. Um, and I also really want to thank the um, team because they helped me actually get this the facility ready for having you all here. Uh, a bunch of the team is here. Uh, I think Kyle, my partners, Beth, uh, Anna. Uh, who am I missing? Anyone? No, I think that's. Everyone's right now. What's that? Where's Chris Bond? Chris actually pulled a gold nighter last oh. night, so he's kind of a little bit that So he was hoping to make it in, but he wasn't able to. But uh, yeah, I just want to give like a brief synopsis about New Foundry, and then actually I want to hand it over to someone else, because they have probably really cool stuff that you all might be interested in uh, to learn about. But New Foundry, uh, we're, a, we're a design, branding, and, and engineering firm here in Ann Arbor. Uh, we do quite a bit of consulting work for uh, startups, all these corporations, plus we have some of our own products that we're trying to get into market. But you know, if you ever need some help, uh, want to chat, have some ideas off us, we're here to definitely help out. We'll give you some, some feedback if you're looking for it. But I actually wanted to introduce you to Lori from Youth Center, because um, I know that all of us, uh, whether we're for profit or not, not for profit, you know, it's really neat uh, knowing what. Uh, services are available in the area, and I don't think enough people actually know about New Center, which is right next door. Us, but they provide a lot of really good services, in particular for nonprofits. Uh, so whether you're a nonprofit or not, I think it'll be really cool to hear about them. So I'll let you introduce Lori here. Thanks. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Lori. I'm the CEO of New Center right next door, and a lot of people think we're just a building, uh, but we're not. On top of being a building where we are a 20 nonprofit co-working space with shared conference rooms, shared IT services, and um, shared tech across the building, we also do other capacity building for nonprofits. We help provide resources to answer nonprofit questions, whether it's about development or how to start a nonprofit. We also offer several trainings throughout the year around fundraising, around looking at social impact of your nonprofit, and also how to network across the business and nonprofit sector. We also do board training and capacity building, so we help people be good board members and we help boards be healthy so nonprofits can have better impact in our community and create a better living space for all of us. And also, we have a program that you may be interested in called MP Serve. And MP Serve is our IT department. We currently serve 60 nonprofits in southeastern Michigan. We work across both the Ann Arbor and Detroit region to provide them with their in house IT services. A lot of nonprofits have had to get by with treating IT as if it was a luxury, and in today's world, it is an absolute necessity. 
So MPSERV comes in, does assessments on the IT needs of a nonprofit, creates direct um, recommendations for their specific organization, whether it's staff of one or staff of 50, and then maintains a long-term contract with them, helping to make sure that everything is up and running, that they're in the cloud, that the printer doesn't shut down, and that they're able to have a greater impact without having to get stuck in a uh, poorly managed IT situation. And the last thing I wanted to share with you, which is our most exciting program that we just launched, um, is a partnership with Zingerman's. And Zingerman's and us have come together with their ZingTrain program. How many people are familiar with ZingTrain? Okay, most people. So ZingTrain is an award-winning, cellular business training program um, for organizations, but it's been unreachable for a lot of nonprofits due to the cost and to the specific business focus of it. So New is bringing our nonprofit expertise into a partnership with ZingTrain to offer a seven-month training program for nonprofits in the area around diversity and inclusion, board training, social entrepreneurship, leadership development, and to help create a better pipeline for high-level, high-trained organizations. The thing that makes New a little bit different than a lot of nonprofits, but is also a model we're trying to promote for nonprofits, is that we do receive almost 65% of our revenue through earned income. So the other percentage of that we raise through cont contributions and grants, and the rest we bring in through the services that we offer to the community. So we're trying to help lift up and elevate that need of nonprofits to consistently chase just the donation dollar, as opposed to how can they create their own social enterprise within their work. We have some flyers here if anybody's interested about an upcoming um, fundraiser for the Leadership Deli. We're really look. that's what we're calling the Zing Train program. Sorry, I didn't explain that. It's called Leadership Delhi, Develop, Elevate, Launch, and Innovate. And we're having a fundraiser at the end of September to help get sponsorships to help promote and endow this program so we can continue to train nonprofits for years to come. We are interested in partnering with the business community, with the social entrepreneurship community, with entrepreneurs and with innovators to help figure out how to match the services and the brilliance that everyone offers with the needs of the nonprofit community so that we can all work better in a more collaborative space. So please feel free to come and see me after the event if you want to chat more, and thanks for having us. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you folks have any questions, definitely feel free to grab Lori afterwards. I know that they're going to have like a Q&A session uh, after each of the presentations, and, and there's just a general mingle where you can just ask folks different questions. Uh, so just want to thank everyone for coming here. I know some of you, especially since it's true at New Check, coming to Ann Arbor, it's a bit of a haul. You know, I've done the, the, the drive out to there, so we really appreciate you all coming out here and participating in this, and I hope to see all of you some more. Cool, so I'll head it back over. <coughs> Okay, so if you've never been here before, this is how the format goes. Each presenter gets five minutes to present their idea, and it's a strict five, so I'll cut them off if they start to go over. And then we get five minutes of questions, which will also get cut off if you go over, and that way we'll stick to a, time, a strict time schedule. So our first speaker tonight is Kevin Kudinenko, and um, he's a recent grad of the University of Michigan, and he started working on Vivergy over a year ago, but it only recently became a company. Got its birthday in May, right? So he's going to tell you a little bit about his group, and I'll let him have the floor. Oh, can we get a round of applause for him? Hi, So, 
Uh, we are Vivergy. My name's Kevin. I have a partner named Dom. I mainly handle the uh, business end of things and some front end as well. Uh, Dom, who's not here today, does a lot of the back end and the front end. All right, so what I wanted to talk to you guys about is what I call interpersonal health. And that means your effect on the health of other people. And it's going to be mainly about energy, which might be uh, uh, an angle you haven't heard about before. So to walk you through real quick, uh, when you use energy, I've got light bulbs symbolizing that. It fires on a coal plant somewhere around here in Michigan, and that coal plant puts air pollution in the air. That is very similar in composition to cigarette smoke. The effect of that is that children in Ann Arbor inhale about eight cigarettes worth of air pollution over the course of the year. And in a given uh, classroom in Ann Arbor, there are four kids with asthma, and they are especially affected because they have sensitive lungs. OK, and to, to better illustrate for, to, to, for this, um, I've got a, a graph from a day late in August. This is actually from the monitoring station in Ypsilanti, so it represents this area. And as you can see, um, the graph actually peaks at the commuting hours between 8 and 9 AM and uh, 5 to 7 PM, somewhere in there. So this is supposed to be a way of showing that um, it's real and it's around here. Um, so to give a description of Vivergy, Vivergy is a web tool for visualizing your impact on local health due to energy consumption. And there are two main components of this uh, front page. The first is that we give a live report on an hourly basis on how many cigarettes are in the air. Um, and the second is that we give you a score, which is our innovation, on your impact on local health. And that's conveyed in a point total. So we really try to keep all the scientific principles on the back end and present it to you in two easy to understand ways. And that's also the thing that no one else is doing right now is uh, talking about air pollution on an individualized basis and um, allowing you actually to do something about it. So on Vivergy, you can log in and fill up to four categories. We've got home energy, vehicle use, airplane use, and buying habits. Um, you can, and then all of the stuff we do is visualized. So we do gamification, and then like this is one of the worlds. This is energy use. As you improve your score, number one, the mood of the world changes. So sunny is the best, but it can go, if your score is really bad compared to people in your area, um, it'll get rainy and all these kids that are running around the screen will go inside. Um, what did we learn from customer discovery? So I talked to a lot of, our key demographic is parents with young kids. Um, when I talked to parents around town, and even in super eco-conscious Ann Arbor, what I found was that the two main activities that parents would do out of concern for sustainability or environmental issues was recycling or turning off the lights. But when I would talk to them about their children's health and child safety issues, they were willing to list a much bigger list of things and more significant actions as well. And that told me, we want to make energy use something you do because you care about your children's health and we want to offer you an opportunity to do better with that. And so this is an uh, example of how we present goals to you. We'll only ever give you four goals at a time. And these are a couple different ones. You just click start a goal. Um, and as you complete it, you can check things off and you finally hit, you hit done. If anyone in the room uses mid.com, it's supposed to be a little similar to that in terms of uh, setting goals and seeing how you're uh, leading up to accomplishing that. Our revenue model is affiliate marketing, just like mint.com. So we're going to recommend products and services. Uh, with custom suggestions, it might be solar panels, insulation, carpooling, you name it. And every, uh, every sale we help convert, we're hoping to get uh, about 5% of that final sale price, so it's pay per closed lead. Um, and there's about 470,000 people in our first target market segment that encompasses 11 major metropolitan areas. Some of them are right here, but there shouldn't be really any surprises in there. Um, how do we determine your electricity score? This is just one example. So we'll take in user data. In this case, it's kilowatt hours or uh, dollars spent on electricity. We combine that with EIA data, which is civic data. And then we apply right here our proprietary algorithms to convert that into an estimated score on the health of others, mainly using health impact studies um, in the literature. We organize it also around the local monitoring station. So if the one you hear is Ypsilanti, Every town that's closer to Ypsilanti than any other monitoring station will become in this area, and that's how we avoid clutter or like some sort of massive scale. We really keep it on a local level. Um, and last thing, our marketing thing is mainly targeted towards schools and getting parents there. Um, 
And there we go. <laughs> Paying the $30 per year. So that's a summary of all the products that we're recommending. So we find out like our predicted adoption rate for each. And then if we assume like 2% of people on our site will buy solar panels, then we can figure out how much revenue per user we're, per year we're getting. You sum up all the different products we're recommending and that gets you to $30 a year. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I'm not sure. So you're okay. getting $30 or you're... So let's say there's 10 products on our site. We think 2% of people will buy each and we can get 20 bucks on each of those sales. Yeah, and then you just sum up each of those products. Go ahead. Do you have localized ad capability? Uh, we could do ads. I like the affiliate marketing stream better because they're higher value for each. So for like a solar panel sale, you can get $1,000 for helping sell one of those things. Um, I mean like is it market, market segmented like local, like look by locality? Like, like yeah. let's say like if I had an energy saving product that I wanted you guys to market uh -huh. for me, could it just be for Ann Arbor? Yeah, yeah, like, 100%. Go ahead. Uh, are you currently signed up with like the affiliates? And if so, is it more through like direct uh, um, agreements with the, the providers or is it like sending them an affiliate Amazon link or something like that? Yeah, we have a direct agreements with people. So like uh, a bunch of the solar companies we have and we just basically, someone would input on our site. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for someone to originate one of these leads that say, I'm so-and-so, I live here, and we'd forward that information on to the solar company and they'd go from there. Um, but we don't want people to feel like they have to visit other websites. We've got further information here that if they want to learn more, they can click into that. Yeah. How far did you take the customer discovery process? So you talked about energy and you didn't get a lot. You talked about kids' health and you got a lot more, but did you tie energy and health in your discovery process? Um, it was difficult. I mean, I would show. I have a video that we have on YouTube that I would show to people, and they would get it. Um, it's just hard to for someone to like instantly react to that information, especially when it's me, a 22 year old guy approaching parents. They're like, "All right, back off. <laughs> like you're not one of us." Um, so it, that was definitely one of my challenges. It was hard to see how exactly like people will actually things they'll actually buy, but I was able to get good feedback on like people's level of attention to the, the different things. Yeah, go ahead. Do you think about the site as kind of a one-time stop for a customer, or is it something that they can like come back to? Is there some kind of incentive for them to keep reevaluating their performance? Oh, you're saying do they log on once or keep on logging Yeah. On? Yeah, so the first time they log on is when they're filling out all the preliminary information. After that, we want them to be setting up goals and accomplishing those goals. And just like as they accomplish something, they can log it back in and start something else. And we try to provide them um, suggestions on a monthly basis as well. So it can be like, oh, I want to accomplish this month, but next month I might take on something a little greater. And that also gets into the social comparison stuff. So if you're like 200 points better than your friend, uh, higher than your friends, you might say, oh, I want to be at least better than my friends. And you can help. Like we can help chart you how you can do better than them. Yeah. What stage are you at right now? So we're putting our beta out uh, next Friday or the Monday after that. And after that, we're trying to get in school systems first across the country, but it'll be mainly open to anyone. Um, I've got. Uh, people in Charlotte and Louisville are the first couple, but I think the best places to go for this would be Bay Area and Boulder, Denver, because there's more of a uh, frame of reference for this sort of stuff already. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the school adoption program? I mean, it was your last slide. How yeah, yeah. That? So there's a, there's a bunch of green school initiatives out there, and also people like the American Lung Association, we're working with them. They already have the contacts in schools, and for them, this presents an opportunity to better engage people rather than your traditional uh, email marketing campaign or a very like uh, old school way of doing it, like a physical boots on the ground way. They can better engage people through this site and uh, and help and it also ends up being a positive thing for them because now they're enabling people to accomplish their goals if they're the American Lung Association or a Green School program. So yeah, people don't want to hear from 22 year old Kevin. They they'll respect the the voices that they already know. All right, thank you. Yep.
got a uh, thing that's set up. Do you want to do that while I'm introducing sure. here? So our next presenter is Steve Schwartz. He is a serial entrepreneur. He, uh, is it you own Alpha Gecko? Yes. Okay. Um, which helped build, they helped build startups, and he's CEO and founder of Hardcode SMS. He is originally from North Carolina, and he moved here in 2008, and he's just stayed. So he is hanging out in Ann Arbor and ready to help build a new future. Can you, can someone let me know when I have like one minute left? I usually give you one minute. So okay, go cool. I'm, I'm going to break out of my presentation and uh, do the cardinal presentation set of doing a live demo. All right. Let's All right. So, You're so. on. All right. I'm Steve Schwartz. Uh, I have a company here in town called Alpha Django. I'm also the co-founder of Car Code SMS. Uh, this presentation was totally custom done for DNU Tech. It was not recycled from a customer <laughs> presentation, which uh. was in turn recycled was not recycled from an A2 New Tech presentation. And I did not recycle that joke from the A2 New Tech presentation <laughs> at all. Um, so Car Code SMS is actually an app for uh, car dealerships. And it basically allows car dealerships to receive SMS text messages from their customers. Um, when we tell a lot of people that that's what we do, they're like, oh, I totally uh, text with, texted with the car dealership when I bought my last car. No, you probably texted directly with the salesperson on his cell phone, which is not technically legal for them to be doing because you're supposed to be able um, to opt out as per TC uh, PA guidelines. And um, also the dealerships don't actually like that because then when the salesperson walks out of the dealership, they took all the lead information with them. So car code SMS allows dealers to receive text messages and to help adoption, we actually create widgets for the dealership websites that uh, automatically adds a text us button onto their website. So if you're on their website, usually they have a click to call and it launches your phone app and you can call them. We add a click to text that'll actually launch your text app and you can just start texting with them. Um, so it allows tech salespeople to text without having to have the dealership sign up for like a Google Voice number or try to do something like that and get all their salespeople to install an app and everything like that. Um, and they don't have to set up their own SMS able, uh, enabled PBX system, which is a phone system. If you know anything about car dealerships, they're not very high tech. They don't do stuff like that. Um, and they don't have to buy a cell phone and just leave it in the sales office and hope someone will respond to text. So um, the, the when a new dealership signs up with us, we automatically assign them a local phone number that can receive texts. Um, when a new inquiry comes, or when someone texts the phone number, we can round rob and assign it to a salesperson. Uh, the salesperson gets an SMS notification with a link they can click, and they can respond <coughs> to the customer. At any time, the customer can text stop, and the dealership can't text you anymore. Um, and also, the, all the conversations automatically get added to the dealership CRM, so they can track things that way too. Um, the user experience is basically you're on your webs their website, you click the text button, it launches a, a text message that you can send, you get an automated response that tells you you can text stop, and uh, then from there you and the salesperson can text. So the salesperson is responding through the car code SMS app, either on their phone or on the desktop. Um, we have like a dealer dashboard and stuff. I'm going to fly through th some of these slides because I kind of want to have time to demo, so I'm just going to... This is the stuff we do. This is why it's not it's extremely easy to build what we build. Um, you can completely white label it. We actually uh, are in the process of working with Edmunds.com to do like a private label thing so that they can push it out to all their dealers. Um, we have an API that some of the, the companies that do the dealership websites, because there's only maybe a handful of them across the US that handle most dealer websites, can actually integrate with our API to have uh, better integration into their websites than just using our JavaScript widget. 
Um, most of them just use the JavaScript widget. Uh, Edmunds.com did a survey a while ago that said 34% of people actually would prefer to text when they have questions about buying a new car because they don't like the hassle of having to call or, or email. Usually when you email, they try to send you all this marketing crap, and when you call, it's just like a really in-your-face way of, of talking with someone you don't know yet. And so uh, a lot of customers find texting a lot easier and a lot less daunting and intimidating. One minute. Um, <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm gonna skip through this. We actually did Hack Emotive at Edmonds back in February, one first place, got 20,000 from that. Got into their first startup accelerator program, and our button is now on a lot of Edmonds.com pages as well. Um, okay, so I'm gonna switch over here to my live demo. Let's see, my phone was not good to sleep. It's supposed to go to sleep, because now you all know my pen. But, um, Basically what happens is, as a customer, I'm on my phone, which is, this is the customer, my mobile phone, which is coming live from my phone here. I'm on a website. This is actually a live implementation. We're at Dunning Subaru here in Ann Arbor. We're actually based out of Seattle, so most of our dealerships are in that area. But you can see they have a text us button. If you click this, it launches your text app with a pre-filled message. I'm not gonna send them a thing, because this is live. So instead, I'm gonna show you what happens when I send that. All right. Any questions? So how do you price this? Um, we charge the dealerships monthly. Okay. So right now we charge about $100 a month. Okay. Is it software as a service now? Yes. Yeah, except for the jobs right Yep, yeah, software as a service. Um, what data do you have showing that it increases uh, sales conversions? Um, we have a lot of data. We have a lot of uh, dealerships that tell us that. We don't have any official channels right now. That's one of the advantages that will come with our partnership with Edmonds. Um, but we have a lot of dealerships that have told us that uh, our, once they sign up for our product that it actually increased the conversions of the inquiries coming in and that they suspect it's because it encourages their salespeople to respond immediately when they're getting text notifications on their phone. Um, but we do know in the dealership space that a sales lead in and of itself is worth about 20 to 25 bucks a lead. If you can prove that it led to a sale, it's worth about three to $350. Um, we've, we just started building it in January. We kind of unofficially launched at the end of February. Since then, our widget has been displayed uh, just around almost three million times. Um, we've generated about 3,000 leads so far. So um, yeah, we're generating a lot of value and we're showing, um, we have a lot of dealers that when they sign up, they actually give us access to their website analytics for their mobile website. And we have a lot of dealers where we actually increase the leads from their mobile website by like more than 100%. How many dealers are paying right now? Um, we've got like 150 signed up. I would say maybe about 50 of those signed up really early on before we actually started charging them, and we told them it was an indefinite free trial. Um, my co-founder knows those numbers a lot better than I do. I think maybe it's somewhere around like 50 or 60 paying, but for all I know, it could be up to 100 by now because I haven't gotten an update on those numbers in the past few weeks. Yeah, what's preventing someone else from doing the exact same thing? That might have been the slide. Absolutely that nothing. Saying. I mean, anyone can really do it, I guess. Um, one of the things about what we've done is that um, this is actually our second startup in this market, so we knew the market really well. Um, anyone, I guess, could build this product. There's actually a couple competitors. The things that we've done differently uh, are, one, that it's um, we've completely simplified what our message is. Like, we're geared towards dealerships. You just fill out a quick form and you automatically get a phone number provision to you and can instantly start receiving texts. So we're not like this all encompassing chat provider with an SMS offering, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of dealerships have liked that. I'd say the biggest thing that we have going for us has been our go-to-market. Within eight months, we've basically gone from like zero to uh, a lot of revenue. And um, we're in the process of doing like some really big enterprise deals with the like Edmunds.com and other players like that in the space. Um, so that's probably the hardest thing to replicate. We also have some parts of the UI that are really uh, interesting. So like if someone, this is the mobile app on the salesperson's uh, phone, and they can do things like uh, tag a text with tags that they can then remember. They can do things like uh, take and uh, send a picture 
And we have other integrations, like we have a direct integration with Edmunds Price Promise, so they can just click that button, type in a stock number, and send a price promise to the customer via text. And we also have one that's not launched yet, but it's basically finished, uh, we've developed it. It allows uh, customers to quickly get credit approved via their mobile phone by filling out a mobile optimized form that's literally like 10 fields long, so super quick and easy to fill out. And we have a button here for the salesperson where they just click the button and it sends the application form to the customer via text. So we have a lot of like integrations like that that are really specific for the market. You outline the values to the salesman, as it seems like he's a critical user in this whole process. Yes. Yeah, salespeople actually really like this. One of the cool things about it is they don't have to give out their cell phone number anymore. Um, and one of the other cool things about it is that, um, unlike some of our competitors, they don't have to install an app, which it's funny, in the tech world, we look at that as a plus, as a positive. We have a native mobile app, which means it's really awesome and polished and easy. And then there's actually entire markets where they ask you, do I have to install an app? Like that's literally the way they ask you. And so one of the big advantages or reasons that salespeople like this too is because they don't actually have to do anything. When a dealership signs up, they put the salespeople phone numbers in there. And when a lead comes in, it just texts them and they click a link and respond. So next we have Nick DeHaan, and he is a first customer. So he's not a founder and a CEO, um, and he also says he's not a conformist. Not a conformist, but I'm wearing a jacket, so I came straight from work, that's why I didn't have time to change. So he is um, with Customer Discovery Ninja tonight. He ran a genetic dating website that failed beautifully, he says. Yes. So he is aware of what it takes to get customers, so that's why he's here. He's gonna give you a perspective about Discovery Ninja, Customer Discovery Ninja. And just as a side note, he grew up in Idaho and he was his graduating class was 47. And he's been here since 2006. Yes. Take it away. Thank you. So uh, just as a quick poll, how many of you have heard of customer discovery and are familiar with the process? Okay, it seems like a pretty good portion. That's gonna help speed things along a little bit. Uh, as uh, Anne-Marie said, I am not a founder in this company. I'm actually a first customer, and so it's a little bit of a different perspective. I'm not here to you know, tell you how great my idea is. I'm telling you to use this product because it helped me, and I want it to stick around because I want to keep using it. So um, you know, the first thing I really want to ask you is why will your idea fail? I'm sure all of you have your own ideas here. And uh, you know, if you look at the data, um, one of the big things now is that they don't fail because you don't build something. You're not able to build something that works. They fail because you don't have a market. You spend too much time building something that people don't care about. And, and the idea behind that is that there's just more risk in the market than there is in the actual ability to build the technology, especially in, um, like say, the software development world. All right, and so the modern solution to this problem, as developed by Steve Blank and Four Steps the Epiphany, is get out of the building and talk to your customers. Find out what their real problem is. And, and the idea behind that is find out what the market's willing to pay for. Find out what they're willing to you know, talk to you, what they want to address with you. And, uh, and that's really the idea of what we're trying to build here, is we're trying to make it easier to uh, perform customer discovery. We want to make it easier for you to talk to your customers. And so um, since you guys are pretty familiar with it, this is really a one-on-one -on -one interview with your customer. This isn't a survey, this isn't you know, a question and answer, this is a conversation to find out about their problems, what's really bothering them, and what they really want you to solve for them. And uh, it involves open-ended questions, you really don't want to lead them, you want them to lead you to the answer. And uh, this is really important, this is independent of your solution, this isn't a pitch, this, you're not trying to sell them anything, you're trying to convince them, you're trying to understand them and, and find out what their problem is so that later, when you have a solution, you can convince them that you can solve it. All right, and so the problem with customer discovery is that it's very time and resource intensive, right? I'm sure you've all done it. It's a lot of hard work. It involves a lot of very painful conversations and a lot of wasted time, all right? And uh, I'm, I'm very guilty of this in my past lives. I've done this all. I continue to make these same mistakes. But if you look, there's four opportunities here to perform this type of problem seeking, and they all have their own issues, right? Market reports are very general. They're not focused on a specific customer segment. And oftentimes, they miss some of the key parts. Uh, friends and family are inherently biased. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. 
Uh, surveys, it's very hard to get uh, unexpected outcomes in surveys, right? It's either going to end up one way or another, but you can pretty much predict what the results are going to be before you actually ask for the survey. And then random strangers, I'm sure you've all approached people, right? We just heard a story about talking to people at the mall, right? I don't fit in with them. Um, they have no real reason to talk to me. It's You're chasing them through the mall and they're trying to get away from you as fast as possible because there's no value for there. And so it inherently happens that you talk to a few of them and you don't have the in-depth conversations you need to get to the core of their problem. All right, and so as we said, time and resources, you don't have enough of either. We're, help, we're here to help you kind of expand uh, the utility of those time and resources that you invest. All right, so the solution is Customer Discovery Ninja, and this is on-demand, live customer discovery. These people are going to be contacting you. All right, you're going to sit wherever you can get an internet connection, and they're actually going to call you. Uh, the best part about this is you get to choose your demographics, right? We've been as specific as people who are looking to find uh, U.S. citizens that are studying to be a private pilot. Okay, and so you can think of how ineffective it is to approach random strangers on the mall, in the mall, versus let's talk to someone who's studying to be a private pilot, or let's talk to someone who's concerned about their children's health, under 25, a female, something like that. Um, and then you're able to actually record calls and take notes within your browser, and so this is uh, all done within the comfort of your building, as we like to say. Steve Blank, you he, he had it right, you gotta go talk to your customers. What if your customers lined up outside your building instead of you chasing them down in the mall? So how it works, it's really simple. You request a live 10 to 15 minute interview um, and you can target demo. Um, your browser will actually ring to let you know that an interview is coming in. Uh, you can ask questions, listen, uh, take notes right in your browser. You don't have to leave, do anything. You're not scribbling notes while you're talking with these people um, on a pad of paper. The call is recorded so you can come back later. You can test hypotheses on data that you had in the past as you develop them. Uh, and then at the end, you can quickly invalidate, which I think is more valuable, but also validate your ideas. Uh, without uh, you know, spending a lot of time. All right, so we got a lot of different stuff in here. Um, well, the key idea is that an alpha version is built and available to you. Go onto the website, customerdiscovery.ninja or customerdiscoverydiscovery.ninja.com and, uh, and put in your email address. There'll be a process for you to walk through. All right, our revenue model is pay per use. You only pay for completed high quality interviews. Right now, for uh, a limited time, it's only $250 per interview. And the key idea is that $250 for 100 interviews is way better than spending months or years of your life chasing an idea that nobody really wants. All right, financials, we've got a hockey stick, everybody loves to see that, but the real idea is that 13% of the population in the US is involved in entrepreneurship in some way, and so we're chasing that market in a long, uh, far off future. Uh, so Jack Dean's here, um, he's the guy that's doing a lot of the, uh, the software implementation. Uh, Steve Sherman's in Las Vegas right now, so uh, uh, you know, take pity on him, right? He's having fun. Um, I'm an early adopter, as I said, I'm not involved in the company at this point, but I really like the idea, I wanna see you succeed, which is why I'm here trying to convince you to use it as well. All right, uh, we have an advisor, Justin Wilcox, who I would highly suggest you look into. We're here to All right, what's that? What are you using to get customers? Canada Turks. So Amazon solved half this problem for us. We're eventually going to move past that to a far more specific uh, engine. But right now, we've got to use that because it's the easiest way How for us to build. How much do you have to pay customers? Is that 250 going to uh, No, so actually, that's got a little bit on top to help us move it. But um, oh, it's, it, it varies depending on the demographic. Okay. Uh, you know, you've got to be, it changes based on who you want to talk to. And, and you know, something I want to mention here is that you're very unlikely to get PhDs in, uh, you know, specialized in plasma resonance of graphene. Okay, so what we're going to talk about here are average, uh, you know, consumers in the U.S. People that are killing time between classes, trying to get a little bit of extra money while they watch soaps on the couch. Um, okay. You said it's helped you. How has it helped you? Right, and so I'm actually I'm continuing to chase my genetic dating idea. Um, when I talk to people, genetics is not what they care about when they date. I can imagine you probably already knew that. To me, it was kind of novel because I can point to the money that you would save if you consider this. But um, uh, I'm still using that right now. And uh, as you can imagine, I'm, I'm sure everybody that's gone through this process, trying to find someone that is in your target demographic, let's say under 25, uh, and a female especially, very difficult for me to approach them and say, hey, let's talk about why you date people, right? It comes off kind of a little bit weird, <laughs> as you can imagine. And so it's hard to have a real in-depth conversation. When they call you, they know they're gonna get paid if they give you good answers, and um, they're actually oftentimes very happy because Mechanical Turk's boring. When they're talking to you, it's an interesting idea, and so they actually give a lot of high-quality feedback. Do you offer any opportunity to like size the market? So let's say 20 people call you up and say, oh, this is awesome. How do you figure out how many of those people are out there? You know, that's a tough question, yeah. I think. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't use this to size the market necessarily. 
Um, you certainly actually, have, something that I like to do is at the end of a customer discovery, it kind of breaks the rules, but I like to test a little bit of pricing sometimes. You're not going to bias them so it's all the way at the end of the interview, you've already got a lot of stuff in it. So I think that's one of the values here. Um, but sizing the market, you're probably going to have to fall back on one of the dirty habits and look at some market reports, try to get some general depth graphic data there. Why you write at 15 minutes? It seems a little short. Sorry. Well, um, you know, that was really just the, the amount of time that we've been using. I think that you could extend that. I don't know how many people would actually call for a longer interview. Um, many people might not be willing to, but we're certainly willing to test it. And so we haven't extended past that, but I think uh, there's some potential value there. We'd be happy to work with you on getting that through it. Great. Well, I hope you're all convinced. Sign up so I can keep using it. <laughs>
phones are getting better. Uh, the GigaPan camera technology is wonderful because you can scan this stuff in. And I was able to secure some more space over here next door in which I want to do it. So the ability for me to pull this off really allowed me to pull, bring, bring this together. So that's what this is in a nutshell. Great. Thank you. So you can provide, people provide their own photographs? Uh, yep. So uh, they just, you know, upload the file under there. What's the cost of a frame? Um, we're going to sell a 3x3 three three this size with a smaller frame for 125 bucks. Oh, and that includes the print? That includes the print. And the frame. Yeah, so wow. the, the print's about 100 bucks. The frame is about 25 It's a smaller, thinner frame, less weight. You can buy a thicker one for more money, but the smaller frames make sense. And what are we ready to go to market? Uh, you're talking to someone just in the process of fundraising. So okay. um, soon, but I've got my space, so it's first thing to What's the price of the big one? Probably in the four hundred dollar range. What's the turnaround time? Uh, we're going to do it real quick. I, I mean, if we can do it in a couple days, that'd be great. Uh, the technology is we print on the ten foot wide fabric. You can now get ten foot wide dye sublimation printers. This is dye sublimation printing. This is not typical printing. Uh, dye sub uh, works a little bit different process. You print with dye sub print onto a paper carrier. And then the paper goes through a calendar, it's called, which is a big heated roller with fabric. And then it gets hot for about 35 seconds. And in that turn process, the, ink tur the powder ink turns into a gas and goes into the fabric and sets. And so when it comes out, you get, you get really black threads, for example. Mm -hmm. And so you get much richer color than you otherwise could. I've tried to print this with a, with a typical printer like I have up back here. It comes out pretty good. It doesn't come out as great. So the, the dye sub really is the trick there. All right, thank you. Sure thing. All right, so I'm just going to let you know um, there are a couple events coming up for DNU Tech. One is called Innovate the Hood, and that is happening at Cass Technical High School in Detroit this Friday um, at 6 o'clock. And then the next DNU Tech is Wednesday, October 1st, and that's at OU at the Smart Zone Business Incubator. It'll be at the same time. And Roger's going to come to you tonight. Yeah, um, I'm Roger Rail. I do live streaming and recording video here and several other events. A2 New Techs and a couple Tuesdays. They'll be again at the uh, law school building, South Hall. Kind of the same format as this. Also, we just announced the date for Ignite Ann Arbor number nine. Mm -hmm. Ignite is uh, the format is like a mini TED Talk. It's 20 slides automatically advancing every 15 seconds, so it's exactly a five minute talk. We have 16 speakers, eight in the first half, eight in the second half. So if you have 20 images that you, or a topic you know a lot about or passionate about, you could submit your ideas at the igniteannarbor.org or .com, it's called uh, website, uh, and we make a selection sometime a couple, three weeks before. So uh, check it out. It's a, it's a great group to go and just watch the presentations too, because it's very eclectic. There's everything from roller derbies to home funerals to how to kill a mastodon. Has <laughs> the date been announced? Yeah. You said oh yeah, the date. Uh, it's it's easy to remember. You can remember 7-Eleven. Just reverse it. It's 11-7. <laughs> it's Friday night uh, from seven o'clock, and then there'll be an after party, of course. So 11 7 and 7. 11 7. Yeah. All right. And then um, I know maybe this doesn't fit this group here, but there's a, a women entrepreneur group that's called Founding Moms, and they meet next Tuesday in Farmington. And then there's a group called Startup Pride, which focuses on building a community for entrepreneurship, and that's at the end of the month. And the guest speaker this month is Reed Torres with Are You Human? So, and that's the 28th, I think. Does anybody else have any events they'd like to announce? Steve? Yeah, uh, two weeks from tomorrow, September something, and I'll look up here in a second, is a New Enterprise Forum, which is a nonprofit that's been around for, I want to say, 27, 28 years now that helps uh, founders craft their pitch for investors. And um, they're having an event on Thursday, like I said, two weeks from tomorrow which is Thursday the 
was it 18th, 18th, I think? Yeah. yeah, Thursday the 18th. So if you go to newenterpriseforum.org, it's a free event. You used to have to pay to go to these events. Now they're free and they're pretty awesome. And you get to see uh, people pitch their startups more. Uh, it's more of like an investor type pitch and coaching than like a new tech kind of pitch. Any other events? All right, well, thank you for coming out tonight. Thanks to the people who pitched. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you here at future events. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Steve, where's the after party? Where's that? Where's the debriefing? Where's the after party for tonight? Oh, for tonight? Uh, no idea. Bills? Bills?